everyone, welcome to or welcome back to my channel So Little Time and my name is Karen. In today's video I'm going to be sharing all my autumn and winter sewing plans and I also have quite a lot of new fabric and patterns that I'd like to share with you so if that is something that you're interested in please stay tuned. doing really well thank you very much for joining me today so I'm really late with bringing you my autumn plans so what I thought I'd do is actually combine my autumn and winter sewing plans for you and then I'm going to be bringing you more regular video updates of the garments that I'm going to be making so I think that will work better so there'll be more shorter videos with fewer garments in and that just saved the time of you waiting for all of the makes that I would have made for autumn and winter so I've got quite a stack of fabrics to show you and also I have bought some new patterns recently but now I'm going to be putting myself on a fabric and pattern buying ban because I really need to start going through what I've got because I've got so many PDFs on my computer that I really need to start using those as well. Um, but I've already got some projects cut out and I have already been sewing a few things so you'll be seeing those very shortly and I've done a couple of pattern tests recently for bobbins and buttons and I'm really excited to be able to show you those once the the patterns are released but they're not at that stage right now so these aren't in any particular order I'm just going to go through what I've got and um, some of them will be in my plans for sewing this autumn and winter and some will just roll over to next year so I just thought I'd show you the fabrics because there might be some that you can get right now so the first fabric I've got is this lovely grey sort of upholstery style fabric but it is really really soft and I got this from Material Magic in Leicester got these lovely stars all over it and this is going to be for my toile of the sew over it Chloe coat now I've got that pattern as a PDF so I don't have it here to physically show you so I'll insert a picture of that on the screen right now and if you remember last year um, I went to Sew Brum and I bought some gorgeous teal boiled wool um, which is my most extravagant purchase to date of fabric it cost a lot of money and I got that from Guthrie and Garney in Birmingham and um, it's absolutely gorgeous but I just am so so scared to cut into it so I definitely want to make a toile of this coat first now I've, I've been planning to make this coat for quite a while but obviously we went into lockdown this year so it really wasn't the season for it either um, and now we've gone into lockdown too in the UK again today so I'm hoping to get this done over the winter sort of period so I can have it ready to wear in spring really next year. So that's going to be my toile version. So that's the fabric for the outer. And then for the inner, for the lining, I've just bought some navy blue anti-static lining. So dead boring, but it will go with it. It will contrast quite well. And also it would just enable me to wear cl my clothes underneath quite comfortably so it will you know, slip against them so it doesn't stick when I put my arm in. Now I'm going to be using the um, Sew Over It workshop that I bought. It's like an online workshop, so Lisa actually goes through the making of the coat step by step. This is going to be my sort of first outerwear, so um, I really do need my hand holding with that. And there are still a few items that I need to get, um, like the double-ended zip and also the ice wall that you sort of put in the shoulder area. I've also bought some interfacing, which is like tailoring style interfacing. So it's like, feels more fabric like than your standard interfacing. So that is my first sort of coat project for the end of the year. The next fabric I've got is some cotton poplin. And this is from Andrea from The Pink Door. And it's a lovely navy polka dot with a white background, but then it's got these all these little tiny polka dots in the middle. Um, and I really liked that and Andrea had actually made a top I think it was for her daughter and I really liked the fabric and then when she got it back in she kindly messaged me and said it was there so I purchased I think three meters of this um, because it is I think quite narrow fabric being a cotton poplin. I haven't really got plans for this fabric but um, whilst I was sorting it out I found the sew over it vintage shirt dress pattern that I have and I thought actually next year that might be quite a nice one to make um, in that fabric. So that's the potential of having those two together. The next fabric that I have is from Felicity Fabrics and I bought this when they had their sale um, earlier this year. And it's this lovely dusky rose pink kind of colour 
with gorgeous florals and branches and birds on it. Um, really, really pretty. And this is a cotton lawn, um, so it's really, really nice texture and very lightweight. And I am planning to make a blouse with that. And I can't actually remember the, um, the blouse that I'm going to be making. Now, I have got it on a PDF, so when I remember it, I'll put the name across the bottom of the screen and I'll insert a picture as well. But I think that will be really nice with that fabric. Um, that one will probably be next year now that I make that because it's not really the time of year for it. This fabric is also from Felicity Fabrics. And again, I bought this earlier this year, so they won't have this in stock anymore, unfortunately. But this, it's a lovely sort of lightweight denim with these lovely flowers all over it. Um, and they are actually embroidered on. I don't know if you can see that. Um, sorry, excuse the creasing again. It's just been folded up in my cupboard after it's been washed. And with this one, um, I was planning to make the Sew Over It Lulu dress. So I'll insert a picture of that. And that I will probably still go ahead and do, but I will save that for next year now, unless I change my mind by the time I come round to do it. Um, but yes, that's uh, one fabric that I haven't shared with you before. Really, really like that, it's lovely quality. The next fabric I have um, is actually also from Felicity Fabrics, and it was a remnant piece, and I just couldn't resist it. It's Chap Inch Bow, I think it's called. Uh, it's a lovely mustard background, and I absolutely love this sort of turquoise colour on it. It's got some lovely birds and florals all over it. Um, I think it's a twill, um, or, yeah, it, I, I think it's a twill. It's quite a heavyweight fabric. I have no idea what I'm going to be making with that yet, um, but I'm sure a project will come along at some point that's suitable for it. If you have any ideas, let me know. Now, what I do have, I think, is about a metre and a half there. Um, let's just have a quick look. Yes, I have about a metre and a half there. So if you have any ideas of what I could make with it, you can just pop that in the comments below if you like. Um, and I'll have a look. But yes, no plans at the moment for that one. But I absolutely love that colourway. It's like so, so gorgeous. Next up is my fabric that I got from the Guthrie & Garney Sewing Society kit when they released the Wilder gown. So that is still on my to-do list. Now, I did, I did want to make that um, quite soon after I'd received it, but I just haven't got round to it. But I've got the pattern cut out ready to go. I just literally need to make a twirl version first just to check fit because it's quite generous in its size so I'll probably size down um, but that's the fabric for it. It's a lovely viscose and I think you get five meters with the kit so loads and loads of fabric to play with and um, you got all the notions included in the kit as well so needles and um, the thread that matches it um, and any other haberdashery items that you actually need for that pattern as well as the pattern so I'll just grab the pattern in case you're not familiar with it, this is the wilder gown here. So I'm not going to be making that version that that's that length. I'll probably um, half both of the tiers. So it's just a little bit more knee length, but I do want two tiers on it. I don't just want the one because there is an option of just having the one tier and making a top version as well. So I'm gonna make the dress version, but obviously with two tiers, but I think I'm going to make it um, so that they're just slightly shorter. Next fabric is from Bobbins and Buttons and I bought this as a remnant um, or I think it was yeah I bought this as a remnant and it's a lovely cotton lawn with these swans all over it and it's like a a bit of a tealy blue kind of background Um, it's absolutely lovely. Now this one I do know what I want to make with. I'm going to be making the Tilly and the Buttons Stevie dress um, so that's the pattern here. I've made it once in the past and I have made some alterations to it to fit my shape. So I've nipped it in at the waist a bit more so it's not so boxy. Um, and that's a really, really quick and easy make. So that one will be done in the spring, ready for the summer. And I'm going to do a sew along for that as well. So next year I'll do a sew along for that so it's ready for the summer. So if you haven't made this dress before and you want um, a holding hand on how to make it, then, you know, keep a look out for that video next year. So my next two fabrics I got from Andrea at The Pink Door, and she has recently been doing live YouTube videos every Sunday at seven o'clock in the evening, UK time. Um, and she's been showing basically all the fabrics that she's got, and she's been doing it in so sort of categories as well. So she did needle cords one week, um, and then last week she was talking about coats and the suitable coating fabrics and things. I really have been enjoying those live videos. So if you've not 
um, been on there while she's been doing that, I definitely recommend it. It's really good fun. You get chatting with everybody who's viewing as well. And there's people tuning in from all over the world, which is great. Um, so I saw while she was doing um, the catch of your needle cord, this gorgeous, gorgeous needle cord fabric, which is a black background with these gorgeous red florals with mustard um, bits, accents in it as well. Um, and I just absolutely love that. And I, I just couldn't resist it. So I have bought two meters of that um, to make a pinafore dress. Now for that one, I think I'm probably going to make the Jennifer Lauren handmade ivy pinafore because I think it will be more suited to that sort of fabric because it's got the nice bust starts um, and the yoke. I've made it before and um, if you've not seen it, then I'll insert a card above. Um, and I just think that will be really nice for Christmas. So I, I'm hoping to get on with that quite soon. And as I have made it before, I do now know what I'm doing. And then I also purchased some lovely Ponte Roma fabric um, in this red colourway. So it goes really, really well. And so I am planning on making um, the Tin in the Buttons cocoa top to go with it or something. Um, to go underneath that so that they will be worn together because I just think that's a really nice pairing. Um, yeah, so especially for Christmas time. So I'm hoping to get on with those soon. I need to get them washed now. So the next fabric I have is from Poppy Bear Fabrics and I'll put their website across the bottom of the screen for you. I actually hadn't heard of them before and it was actually Michelle from Sewing Bunny who had mentioned it on her channel. So thank you, Michelle. Um, I bought some jersey fabric from them with this lovely sort of bluey purpley background with palm trees and parrots on or parakeets and um, yeah really really lovely quality fabric I haven't washed this yet so I need to put that in the wash and I bought some ribbon fabric to go with it on the now. website it wasn't very easy to distinguish between um, the colours to sort of see if they would match up so the ribbing I bought isn't quite quite the right colour matching up with this here but I don't think it matters too much I still think it will go um, and with these two I am planning to make the Tilly and the Buttons Juno pyjamas out of her book Make It Simple. So this is the Juno pyjamas here really really nice simple make I've been wearing my True Bias Hudson pants um, sort of loungewear set that I made earlier this year quite a lot in the evenings and I have wore it to bed occasionally but that is quite warm because it was a French terry that I used whereas this is just a standard jersey so I think that would be a little bit more lightweight for wearing in bed as we've now put the thick quilts on um, so it is quite snuggly yeah and this will just have a little bit more stretch in it as well so I'm going to be making the Juno pyjamas with those so that will be definitely done this month. Um, so that'll be one that you'll be seeing very shortly. Okay, next up is some more fabric from Felicity Fabrics. And I bought this, I think it was in their sale again earlier this year. It's a lovely sort of crinkle crepe with a navy blue background with these white polka dots all over it. It's got absolutely gorgeous drape and movement in that fabric. It's quite lightweight. So I will be using a, need a very fine needle so I don't snag the fabric. Um, and with this, I am planning to make the Tilly and the Buttons indigo dress. So this is the smock version on the front and then you'll see on the line drawings on the back, there's a dress version. I have made it before. If you've not seen my other version, which I absolutely love, I'll put a card up above so you can check that out. Um, so I'm going to be making another one in this fabric, but I think this time what I'm going to do is just do the standard gathered waist and possibly add the flanked sleeves on um, as I just did the bracelet sleeves before so I'll see how I go but I think doing the ruffled sort of exposed seam around the waist might be a little bit too much for this fabric because this is a lot lighter weight than the fabric that I used previously and a lot more drapey so I think it'll be a little bit more tricky to work with but I'm excited to do that one as it's um really really lovely fabric so I'm not sure when I'll get round to doing that one, whether that'll be part of my autumn and winter plans, I don't know, I might do that ready for spring next year. Next up, I'm really excited to share this one with you actually. Um, this is going to be for one of my twins. Now, um, you know I've got three boys, one set twins, so Harry, my eldest, he always hands down his clothes if they're fit to hand down. Um, and Thomas, who is my blonde twin, he um, is a little bit bigger than James, um, so he always gets Harry's clothes first and then they go to James. So James gets them third hand, unfortunately, but um, coats and things, they tend to stay in quite decent 
sort of conditions, so they have been handed down. But um, recently I've noticed that James's anorak is quite, getting quite short, so I'm really excited to do making a new sort of anorak for him. And I got this fabric from Felicity Fabrics, so this is actually in return for a blog post, so I haven't purchased this fabric. And it's this gorgeous soft shell, which is navy blue background with these sort of little racing cars all over it. And then on the reverse, it's got this lime green fleece. So I don't think I'll need to line the anorak that I'm going to be making. I'm just going to bias, um, bias bind the hems and the seam lines and that kind of thing. Um, just because it's already got that fleece lining so I don't think I need to add another layer and my boys they don't like to wear anything that makes them too hot especially in the cold weather they still are quite happy wearing sort of more lightweight clothing I mean it's gone really quite cold now here in the UK and they're still wearing shorts to school and they didn't want to wear their thick coats yesterday um, <laughs> yeah so that is what I'm going to be making. Now, I'll show you the pattern that I have bought. It's a PDF pattern, but I did have my dad print out the instructions because I just find it easier to have them to hand rather than keep loading my laptop up to have a look at the instructions. So I have got to piece together the actual um, pattern itself as it's just in A4 sheets. I don't think there was an A0 size, or if there was, I haven't sent it off to the printers. So it's the Pixie Pea Coat by Twig and Tail. Um, so it's just in black and white, I've just had it printed in black and white, so it's not very clear, but you can actually use this coat um, to make it up in blanket fabric, wool, all sorts of different fabrics. I mean, what they try to do, twig and tail, is get you to reuse things that you've already got, so it's like a sustainable make. Um, and I know I'm using a soft shell, but I just think this is going to be more suitable for my boys in the sort of wet weather, really. Um, so I shall show you a few more pictures. They're not going to be very clear, unfortunately, because it is in black and white, but I hope you sort of get the idea. Um, and you can have a pixie sort of style hood like this, but I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be doing, you know, a regular rounded hood. Um, and James will be having that. Now, Thomas has seen that fabric and he said, oh, you know, I want one. So I'll probably end up having to get some more and make an, another one. And I've heard that this is a really nice pattern to make and is really nice and easy. So I'm really looking forward to giving that a go. Um, yeah, and this fabric looks like it's going to be very easy to work with as well, so fingers crossed. Okay, next up is a chambray fabric. I can't remember where I bought it from now, so if I do remember, I'll put it across the bottom of the screen for you. And it's um, this sort of very lightweight denim sort of colour with daisies on it. It's very, very lightweight, so this is something that I will be making next year. Um, and I have paired it up with the Megan Nielsen Darling Ranges dress. And I'd like to make this version here, but I'm going to do a sleeveless version. Um, Sally from um, Secret Life of the Seamstress, she has made quite a few of these and she was the one that gave me inspiration for it. So I definitely want to make the sleeveless version like she has. So, but in this style with the more fitted waist. So that's the pairing for those two. So the next fabric I have, I bought from Tamlin from Sewn on the Time. She has a D-stash occasionally on her Instagram. So I'll link that D-stash account in the description box below for you. And I bought this lovely jersey, which has got a very sort of dark navy background with white polka dots all over it. As you can see, there's a theme there. I do like my polka dots and navy and white. Um, and this is actually very, very soft to the touch. It's got like a peach skin sort of feel to it. Um, so really, really soft. It's very drapey, so it's a lot more like a viscose jersey. And I don't use viscose jerseys very often because I do tend to like a more structured jersey. So I don't really have any plans for this one at the moment. And there's a lot and lot of stretch in it. Um, and it doesn't really go white, which is quite nice when you stretch it. I'm not really sure, like I say, what to make with it, although I did Think that maybe the sew over at Molly Top might work quite well. I tried one in the past with Ponty Roma and it was a complete fail because it was the wrong type of fabric. So this would work perfectly, but I have got quite a lot there. So it would be nice to make maybe a dress or something. Um, if you have any suggestions of patterns that might be suitable for this fabric, please let me know. Um, but that will be something that I probably will make next year now. 
So I'm really excited to show you my next fabric purchase. And I got this from Textile Express recently. So I'm assuming they still have it on their website. And it's a raincoat fabric with these lovely ladies all over it with these funky sunglasses. And I absolutely love this. I just thought it was really fun. So I'm planning to make a raincoat for myself with this. This fabric is a lot more lightweight than I thought it was going to be. So um, yeah, it's it should be hopefully quite easy to work with, although it might stick a little bit on my machine. We'll see how we go. So I will definitely need to line this one. So I'm gonna to have to buy some lining fabric to go with it um, to make this. And I think I'll probably make use a fleece kind of lining. So it's a quite warmish rain, raincoat. Um, now I did chicken out and I bought the more muted colourway of this. They did have another one on their website which was like more yellows and blues, which I did really like, but I just thought it was a bit loud. <laughs> um, yeah, a bit too loud for me. So I went with this one and I'm really pleased that I did because I just absolutely love this. So the pattern that I'm going to be pairing this up with is the truffle coat. Um, and I can't remember who it is actually by, but I'll insert a picture on the screen for you because I've not got it as a standard sort of paper pattern. I've got it as PDF. And I was actually recommended this pattern by Liz from The Baker That Sews. Um, she has made a version for herself and she also made, I think, the um, children's version for her daughters as well. Um, so if you have a look back through her Instagram account, you'll see her beautiful versions that she made. So I'm really pleased that she actually suggested that pattern for me because it's more my style, it's more um, sort of A-line, very similar to the sea salt one that I've already got which needs re-waterproofing because I get wet in it now. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to make that, um, just think it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm hoping to get that done sort of over the autumn, winter months. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Next up is the Sew Over It Audrey top. So again, I'll insert a picture of that one. Now you probably would have seen this fabric before because I showed it in a previous video and I was planning to make the Sew Over It Georgia dress, Georgie dress with it, um, but I didn't have enough, unfortunately. So it's this lovely jersey, which I got from Material Girl Laura, who has unfortunately now ceased trading. Um, and I think it might have actually been a remnant piece that I did buy, which is why I only had one and a half meters of it. So I've cut it out to be the Sew Over It Audrey top. Um, and I just think that's gonna be really, really nice. There are a few different neck lines on that top. I think you can have one with a bow, one with a knot, and one with just sort of a round sort of neck style. Um, and again, Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door, she has made quite a few, so I got inspiration from her. So yes, I am going to be making the size 10 in the Audrey top, so I'll see how I get on with that. And I'm just going to be making the one with the standard neck band, no um, bow or, or knot version. I just think for me that will be, um, yeah, I just think for me that's something that I will prefer. So that's the fabric for that. That's all cut out ready to go, so it shouldn't actually take me too long to make that up. Next up, I'm actually going to be making a little girl's dress for my friend who's pregnant. She is due in December. So I'm making this New Look 6925 pattern. And I'm going to be making this version here, but without the ribbon on it. I'm just going to keep it a basic sort of gathered skirt style dress. I have made it once in the past. You probably won't have seen it because it was before I started my YouTube channel. I have cut the fabric out already and this fabric has been gifted to me by Minerva in return for a blog post. And I've had this for quite a while. Wasn't really sure what to do with it. And I will have shown you this before because I was going to make a skirt for myself, but I changed my mind. So it's this cotton poplin with these green and mustard leaves all over it with a white background. And I just thought that was quite sort of a nice neutral colour. Um, and I have got some lining fabric, which was an old bed sheet that I've just sort of cut. It's all cut out, ready to go, as you can see. But the background of that is just white with some florals and leaves on it. So I just thought that will go quite well together. So I'm going to be doing the um, burrito method to make sure that all of the seams are enclosed on the lined bodice area. And like I say, I've made that before and that's quite a nice sew. So just literally a lined bodice with a gathered skirt attached and a invisible zip in the back. Okay, so next up is the Lucida dress by Friday Pattern Company. And I showed you this pattern before and I am making this dress out of a stretch velour fabric that I was gifted from Minerva in return for a blog post. And I've had this fabric for quite a while as well, actually. Now I did start making this dress up already um, and I made the bodice up completely, as you can see here. So it's got um, 
some ties in the middle that draws in the middle section around your bust area and that's really really flattering now the reason i ceased making that is because i didn't like the finish on the neckline at the back you just fold it over and top stitch it down um, and i just didn't like that and also there is quite a bit of excess at the back around my neck so i'm putting in some darts on my next version um, now on the inside of the front bodice i'll just show you it's lined with this sort of black um, jersey, lightweight jersey fabric that I had. So what I'm going to do is actually line the back as well as I think that will give a better finish rather than having just that folded over section there because I don't like to have all this on display either where the um, overlocking is. I just think it would be much, much neater. And also what I did was lengthen the skirt by about two inches because I noticed that it came up quite short. I mean, you can't really tell on the front picture there, but on the back, where she's wearing it, it is quite a short dress. And I had a look through Instagram as well at where others had made it and it, it does come up really short, a lot shorter than I want to wear it anyway. So I am going to, um, I've lengthened it, the skirt by two inches. So I'm remaking that dress, but it is a really quick sew. So I'm excited to get that finished. And I think that sort of fabric is really nice for this time of year. So it'd be nice to wear around Christmas time. Next up is this um, loop back jersey, which I've recently purchased from So So So. And it's just your standard sort of white background with navy blue stripe through it. So I'm going to be making a lovely Breton style top. It is to replace my um, lovely cocoa top that I've had for years. It just died a death recently. It got holes in the seams, which I could have actually restitched, but um, it had gone a funny colour where my deodorant had stained it over the years and it just looked a bit worse for wear. So that ended up going in the bin. Um, and I wanted to remake it because it was a, a definite staple in my wardrobe. I wear it with quite a lot of my clothes and pinafores. Um, this version, the stripes are slightly wider, which I don't mind. The previous fabric I used was from John Lewis and it was a Pontaroma fabric, but um, I haven't been going into town recently for obvious reasons. And when I looked on their website, they didn't have it. They just had the other colourway, which was the blue with the navy blue with the white stripe. So the reverse colour. Um, but I wanted this one because it goes with a lot more of my pinnacles. So that's going to be turned into another cocoa top by Tilly and the Buttons. So the next fabric I've got to show you is a lovely classic denim, which I got from Felicity Fabrics earlier this year. And initially I was going to be making this into the Tilly and the Buttons nest skirt, which is your sort of standard denim skirt, but I've decided not to do that as I already have the Nina Lee Camden skirt in a very similar fabric, and I wear that one quite a lot. So I have now decided to use this for my project for the hashtag swap share sew challenge. Now, if you've not heard of that before, it's been created by the lovely Jane from Loopy Mabel's Closet and Rosie from Rosie Sews Modern Vintage. They both came up with this hashtag last year and I took part in that. And you're basically paired up with another sewer and you sort of get some haberdashery notions to send to each other and then you put that on the garment that you make. Um, and there were prizes to be won last year. So, and I was fortunate enough to have won one of the prizes, which was great for best garment. Um, so for this, I am going to be making the Emily Pinafore by Bobbins and Buttons. And I have made that in the past. So I'll insert a picture of that because it's on a PDF. And that fits me really well because it's a lovely A-line shape. So I don't need to make any alterations to that to fit me. So I have been paired up with the lovely Lucy from Made by Lucy and she has got a lovely YouTube channel and Instagram account so I'll, I'll link both of those below and she also has her own shop as well where she makes gorgeous things to sell so again I will link that as well in the description box below for you so we have sent each other our packages but we haven't received them as yet so um, I'm looking forward to see what she sends me and you just need to try and incorporate as much of the notions that you each send each other into your garment as possible. So I'm excited to see what she's going to send me. And we're actually having a sewing day together on Zoom um, whilst we're making our garments up. So I'm really looking forward to that because I haven't sewn with anybody before, um, you know, but even doing it virtually, it would just be really fun. Um, yeah, so that's set up for that. And it has got a little bit of stretch in it as well. So um, that would be quite comfortable to wear. Now I will be lining it. Um, so I need to get some lining fabric just so I can get that. So it's more comfortable to wear with tights. I just do that now. I interline all of my pinafore dresses as standard. Okay, so we are coming near the end. Um, I just wanted to show you this pattern that I picked up uh, recently at my a local charity shop. And it's the um, Simplicity 
pattern by Cynthia Rowley and I just really liked this dress here. It's a really, really basic dress made out of jersey fabric and I thought that would just be lovely to wear in the sort of summer next year, I suppose, um, although you could layer it up with the top underneath. Just really, really like that. It looks really, really simple. Although when I opened up the instructions, it says it includes an invisible zip and I thought, well, I'm not going to bother putting a zip in that if it's jersey fabric because you can just stretch it over your head. So unfortunately, it, d it does give you the finished garment measurements, but obviously with that one being a stretch and then the jacket is woven, um, it's really hard to decide which size is going to be suitable because it gives you the finished garment measurements as if it was for a woven, which is a bit annoying. So it's not showing negative ease. So I'm just gonna have to sort of guess. I'll probably just go ahead and make the size 10 and see how I get on. But yeah, I really was pleased to pick that up. 50p that cost me. So um, and if you've been following me on Instagram, you know I love a bargain. I always go charity shop. Shopping, it's another sort of hobby alongside sewing and fabric buying. <laughs> So the other pattern that I'm going to be making up, I hope very soon, is the Tilly and the Buttons Zadie dress. And that's this dress here. And I have actually already got this cut out. It's under my bed upstairs, but it's still got the pattern pieces attached to it. So I can't bring it down to show you um, because you're not gonna be able to see the fabric very well. And the reason I've got the pattern pieces still on it is because I need to make chalk marks as to where I need to put all the marks and notches and things because you do need to line them up to get these points accurate. So I need to do that. And I have been procrastinating it because of that, because I'm a bit scared of going wrong. Um, so I will be do sewing that up on my sewing machine first before it even touches my overlocker. I don't want to cut any fabric off unnecessarily. Um, and yes, the, I'm making the version with the long sleeves and I've got a navy blue fabric for the sleeves and sort of side bodice sections. And then the top and the skirt there where you've got the contrast in, I've got a white background with navy blue flowers over it and actually those fabrics I got from Girl Charlie before they ceased trading in the UK and that was actually using my voucher which I won from the Swap Share Sew Challenge last year so you can see how long I've actually had that under my bed cut out so it's about time I got on with it. The last thing then that I want to show you is my Guthrie & Garney Sewing Society kit, which I got fairly recently. Now this isn't the most recent box, this is actually from September, so these aren't available anymore, and you do usually have to be quick off the mark to get them. They are released every when first Wednesday of the month at 12 o'clock, and you do have to sort of be there ready to purchase online, because if it's something that's really popular, it, it sells out like hotcakes so, so quick. Um, and I had this as a belated birthday present from my mother-in-law. Um, so this is the Pauline Alice Churia dungarees. Now I've opened the box, but I haven't actually opened anything inside yet. It's just been sat underneath my bed. And that's because I'm not planning on making these right now. I am trying to get a little bit of weight off that I put on in the lockdown period. Like a lot of people, I ate quite a bit and drank quite a bit through that time, especially as it was summer, you know, we were eating and drinking in the garden quite a lot. And um, yeah, I wasn't really doing as much exercise as I should have been. So I've put on a few pounds, need to get it off because I can't fit into some of my me maids, which is really annoying. Um, so I haven't opened these because I want to get the weight off before I start them. So inside the box, you get the A0 pattern sheets for this particular pattern rather than the pattern itself. Um, and I like how clear those are actually, really, really clear to trace off. So that's what I'll be doing. And then inside, Lauren has actually included um, just a letter and also some extra pattern pieces because I think there was an error on the actual pattern um, itself. So she's included those. And then with all these society kits, you do get an online video um, to be able to view any tips and tricks uh, for sewing up or if you need to deviate away from the pattern and Lauren suggests doing it in a different way. Um, so I'm really quite excited to watch that video. I haven't done so yet. I know Angela from Death and Thread Tales has recently made this pattern and it looks absolutely gorgeous on her, but she said that she did need the video. Um, so I'm interested to see what that's like. Um, so I'm gonna open a few bits in here actually because I've not seen, you know, what's inside. So I'll open up the little packet first, to see what's inside here. So you get some prim wonder tape. Um, and I'm assuming that's to help put the zip in or something. So you get nine meters of that. 
You get the Made By Me with G&G &G sewing label to put inside. Now I did have that as part of my kit for the Wilder gown, but I actually used that on one of my son's t-shirts because he ripped it at the bottom. So I just put it over the edge of the hem and that worked quite well. So I won't be able to put that in my Wilder gown, unfortunately. So you get that label. And then you get some matching Guterman thread. And then the dungaree clips and buttons, which you just snap on. Some standard sewing needles, size 80. And then two zips. So I'm not really sure why you get two because I've not really looked at the pattern or the instructions or the video or anything yet. So I'm assuming maybe it's on both sides. Um, yeah, so we'll see. So the fabric then is something that I've not used before. And it is this gorgeous navy blue twill fabric. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really good quality, as you would expect from Guthrie & Garney. I absolutely love the fabrics from Guthrie & Garney. I think they are worth the price because you get decent quality. Um, and I love visiting their shop, so I have missed going this year. Um, as I'm really lucky that my in-laws live literally down the road, so I can pop in as and when I visit them. Yes, so that's that. Um, and then you get this mesh. And again, I'm not really sure what that is for as yet, so we shall see. But that will be made once I get to my goal weight. So I need to lose about a stone at the minute. Um, yeah, which I'm not good at dieting. I like my food. Ooh. Anyway, I won't bore you with that. Um, but that's my sewing cider kit. So that, I think, has brought me up to date with all of my plans moving forward. So, like I said, I'm just going to show you the makes sort of more frequently so you'll get more shorter videos so I think that's probably better as well um rather than having a really long video so hopefully this video hasn't been too long for you um, and I've got loads of plans for next year um my mate and I went out the window for this year because I don't know about you but because we're not really going anywhere um some of the makes you know just didn't sort of materialize that I wanted to make up because they were just going to be sat in the wardrobe after making them. So I have been making things that I am more likely to wear at home around the house and that kind of thing. So next year, hopefully, if some of these bands get lifted, then um, I'll have more scope to wear some of the more prettier garments that I'm planning to make. But yes, so many plans whizzing around my head all the time. Um, and I've got lots and lots of fabrics and patterns that I need to sort of get sewn up from my stash already so I hope you've enjoyed this video anyway if you have done so please do give me a like a thumbs up um, and if you haven't already please do consider subscribing if you would like to support my channel that would be amazing I do have a ko -fi page and I'll put that link across the bottom of the screen for you thank you very much for watching as always I hope you're all keeping well take care and I shall see you soon bye